Hey Church, it's the Virgos here. Welcome to another week of Church Online. Uh, we hope you've had a really good week and we'll catch up with you soon. Welcome to church. Welcome to church this morning from sunny Darwin. I hope as you tune in online today, you will be truly blessed by God's word and encouraged. I hope you have an awesome day. Hi, Pop. See you all soon. Hi, everyone. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity
Hello there. Uh, great to have you along again uh, as part of our service. We're going to, over the next few weeks, give a cameo of different people as they answer some questions in or around 60 seconds. A lot of people have said to us over the past many months, it would be good to know who's who and get a little idea of different people. So we're setting that goal for different ones as they video themselves and answer a number of questions in a minute or so. So here are some of them. Hi, my name is Melanie Basili. Um, I wasn't sure about three words that describe me, so I asked my son and he said, mum, teacher and kind. And I am currently doing a slow Bible study, verse by verse study through the book of Mark. Um, savory or sweet, I'd have to say both, <laughs> although I do have quite a big sweet tooth. Um, how has God reminded me of his faithfulness in this season? Just, just the fact that he's still there. Um, I just can hold on to all his promises that he doesn't abandon us, even though the world is in chaos. Um, do I have a word for this year? Unpredictable. <laughs> What's my favorite scripture? I actually don't have one because I just find there's so many great scriptures and I just pull on the ones that I need at the time. So, um, and what's an opportunity you see for the body of Christ in this time of COVID? Um, I think just sharing our hope and hopefully we can be a little bit more calmer as people, um, knowing that we've got God to trust in during this time. I miss you all. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I'm John Bashford, um, and I'm a person of uh, positive attitude towards life. For the last watched uh, a couple of shows on television, which was about uh, God sent messages to the people to go out and visit uh, those who were struggling with some issues, and I found it very interesting and very inspiring. I'm a savoury and a sweet person. I like a little ice cream with uh, chocolate flavouring. God's faithfulness to me over this period of time has been marvellous in the way he's provided for me and my family and uh, looked after us in difficult times and kept us safe from the COVID that's going around. A word for this year is just absolutely disastrous. Yet, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways you can acknowledge him, he will direct your path and that is great. And that's my favorite scripture. The opportunity I see for the body of Christ in these circumstances is to love your neighbor as yourself and to serve the community as best you can for those who are doing it the toughest. That's how I see the body of Christ making a difference. Hi, my name is Michelle. Three words that describe me are outgoing, energetic and enthusiastic. Um, I'm currently watching uh, Belgravia on the TV and I've been reading the works of the Holy Spirit in uh, C.S. Lewis's writings by Leanne Payne. Um, I'm a, definitely a savoury person. God has reminded me of his faithfulness just in the encouragements that I get from my Bible reading and praying. Uh, and I have a word for this year. It's crazy. Uh, my favourite scripture, particularly Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verses 1 to 7, where it talks about him uh, disciplining us when and treating us as his sons. And an opportunity to see the body of Christ at this time is um, I think that we should all, we'll all be able to be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece out in our community. And I think it's also a great opportunity just to slow down and to spend some uh, extra time just in prayer and Bible reading to get to know God better. Thanks.
Greetings, church. Can you join with me in prayer? Loving Father, we come before you and praise your name, for you are the Lord God Almighty, yet you also love and care for every single person on this earth. We thank you, Father, that we are able to talk to you in this way, and thank you that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We pray that you will forgive us for times that we only think about the COVID crisis with how it affects us personally instead of seeing it from the world perspective. We pray for those in places like Indonesia who yesterday had the highest daily death toll in the world and are running out of oxygen for those that are fortunate enough to secure a hospital bed. We pray for the thousands of children in India that have been left orphaned due to the death of their parents and for these children that are left raising their younger siblings. We pray for all the people in countries around the world that are in worse situations than what we find ourselves here in Australia. We pray for Baptist World Aid and their partners as they seek to be your hands and feet on behalf of so, in so many countries in crisis. We pray for those in leadership in federal, state, local government, health departments, law enforcement, therapeutic goods administration, that they may make decisions on the behalf of each one of us, especially regarding lockdowns, vaccine rollouts and COVID support payments. Please give them wisdom and discernment to make wise decisions, not political decisions. We pray for our frontline workers, including those working in the hospitals, aged care, disability care, doctors' surgeries, pharmacies, the COVID testing clinics and vaccination centres. We also pray for our essential workers that need to leave their homes each and every day to allow us to have the essential goods such as food, power, heating, water, deliveries, to keep our straight streets free of garbage and our streets safe. We also pray for those working long hours doing the COVID tracing and pathology. We pray for a ring of protection around each one of these, that they will be kept safe from the virus, that, we will have the, that they will have the strength to keep on going. We pray for each and every person that is making a sacrifice on our behalf and ask for a special blessing upon each one of them. We pray for those in our country affected by the lockdown orders especially those in Sydney, Greater Sydney, with the extended lockdown. Lord, please care for each person who has lost their job, has had their workplace closed, has their income reduced, or have had to close their business. Please provide for their every need and show each one of us how we can love and care for each other. We pray for the parents that are needing to do homeschooling of their children, often while working themselves. We also pray for those doing their HSC with such uncertainty with regards to major works and performances and exams and missing out on the milestones associated with their final year of school. We pray for families that are grieving the loss of loved ones and haven't been able to grieve with the families, extended families and friends or to give their loved ones a celebration of life that they have deserved. We pray for those who have missed out on special times of celebrations, such as weddings, engagements, birthdays and births. In this season of lockdown, we pray that you give us strength, patience and courage. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Reading from the uh, book of Hebrews this morning, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus, whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. For he was faithful to God who appointed him. Just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses. Just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truth God would reveal later. But Christ as the Son is in charge of God's entire house 
and we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Hello again as we continue to open up the book of Hebrews. Last week Bernie looked with us at chapter 2 or at least from verse 5 in chapter 2 to the end of the chapter and today we're going to concentrate uh, as we look at chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Thank you Joe for reading uh, that portion. Let me first just go back though to to chapter 2 and verse 1. Last week Bernie reminded us that uh, he came Jesus came, we saw, we saw him in that bodily form, he conquered and he conquered death, he conquered uh, sin so that we might know uh, God again and live. It says there in chapter 2 verse 1, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. I imagine that many of you have been fishing out in a boat at some stage or another. I have many times, and out on the water, it's nice to just sit and have a line out over the edge of the boat, drifting along, particularly as you fish for flathead. But it doesn't take too long, does it, to drift quite some way. And without uh, attending, without uh, considering the dangers that might be around, you can really find yourself in trouble fairly quickly. It doesn't take too long before you drift an awful long way. I encourage you in these strange times with us not meeting right at the moment as as the gathered church, don't drift. Don't drift. Stay strong in the faith. Make sure that you're getting up of a morning or in the evening or whenever the time is for you to have time alone with God. Be in his word. Be praying. Stay connected with the body, which is the church. If that means you making the first step to another, making that phone call, having that coffee, connecting with somebody, then do that. Again, as Bernie and I and others have encouraged you so often, if you're not a part of a small group, I urge you to do that, to uh, do what it takes to be part of a small group and all you have to do is to connect with Bernie and he will help you in finding uh, an appropriate small group for you that fits your timing and so on. It says here in this first verse, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. The truth we have heard is nicely packaged at the end there of chapter 2, verses 14 and following. The truth we have heard is the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so again, just in chapter 2, verse 14, because God's children are human beings, us, made of flesh and blood... The Son, Jesus, also became flesh and blood. And the writer goes on to say he had to do that. He had to come from the halls of heaven and take on human form to be able to represent us as he goes to the cross. It goes on to say, For only as a human being could he die... And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So as Jesus takes on human form and then goes to the cross and in his body carries our sin, as he deals with sin and death on the cross, so 
we can come back to God again and can be free from the fear. He goes on in verse 15, only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We distract ourselves, we busy ourselves, we keep the noise on around ourselves, but in those quiet times when you're able to think toward the end of life, whenever that might be for each of us, does it worry you? Are you fearful? Because you don't have to be. Jesus took on human form so that he could die to represent us and in dying in representing us, he then releases us as we accept what he did for us on our behalf so the fear of dying can be released from us. We can be set free from that fear. It's just a beautiful message. And he goes on to say, we also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Again, us as humanity. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. He had to be human in order to do that. As an angelic being or coming as God, he would not have been able to represent us. But in human form, he is able to. Since he himself has gone, verse 18, through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. I urge you to read through chapters, chapter 2, verse 14 to 18 a few times and just let that soak into yourself. We move on, though, into chapter 3. And uh, here we, we, we begin with the words, and so. In some translations, it has the word, therefore. And as I said before, whenever you see the word, therefore, you have to ask what the therefore is there for. And so it usually pushes you back to say, with that in mind, what has been said before? Well, Jesus is greater than the prophetic uh, movement that went through the Old Testament. Jesus is greater than the angels. He has become human in order to represent us. Therefore... And now we come to this point here where it says, in my translation, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven. That's the first part of verse 1. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God would be better translated simply holy brothers. We can, of course, add sisters but in the original, it was simply holy brothers. And so he is speaking to us who are holy, meaning, and that word is always, has the sense of being set apart for God. He is now speaking to the church specifically, to you and I, if you're a Jesus follower. Holy brothers and sisters, if you yourself, like me, have set ourselves aside for the express use and purpose of God, then that makes us holy in that sense. Just the same as we are called to be holy in Romans chapter 12 and verses 1. As we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to him. We set ourselves apart for God's express use and purpose. We are called in 1 Peter, the the book of 1 Peter, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that we might declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. We are a holy people. We're called to be a holy people. But if you're anything like me, 
you have to return to that again and again and again and say, God, I'm yours again. Because all too often in my life, and I'm sure in yours, we start off our, on our own trails and our own tracks. We, we forget to consult God about all sorts of things. And we have to come back again and say, God, I want to be holy. I want to be set apart for you. But he doesn't just speak to the holy brothers. He speaks to those who are partners with those called to heaven. In other translations, that uh, can be read, partakers in a heavenly calling. It means not only are we holy, set apart for God, but we have an expectation of heaven and in a sense we are being called, being drawn toward heaven. We're citizens there already. Now, I know that we need to be careful that we don't fall into the category of uh, being so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly use. There are some people who are like that. We need to to stay grounded. There are decisions that we need to make here on earth, of course, and right at the moment we're developing a block out at Conjola and setting up a shed there and doing things that are a part of the, the world that we live in. But I am constantly reminded and conscious of the fact that heaven is drawing me. That because of Christ, I am a citizen of heaven. Holy brothers and sisters, you who are called toward heaven is what uh, we are called here. And if you're a Jesus follower as I am, This is our identity. (laughs) You and I are wholly set apart for God and we have the expectation, the wonder, the calling, the drawing of heaven. We are citizens there and we need to live in the light of that reality. And so in light of all of who we are, he then goes on to say that we are to think carefully. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus. Think carefully, consider deeply, ponder over Jesus. Let me say those three Phrases again, think carefully, consider deeply, ponder over Jesus. I encourage you to take the decisive action to find some sun one day, very soon, sit on a chair in the quiet and just read some of these verses again and ponder, think, consider Jesus. It will take time. It will take silence, solitude. It will take the need for space Here, the writer of the book of Hebrews encourages his Hebrew readership to consider Jesus deeply. And that in light of two things, whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. Whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. The word that is in my translation, God's messenger, is actually apostle. It's the only time in the New Testament where the word apostle is put to Jesus. We hear of the apostles who 
founded the church, those disciples who then became apostles and, and uh, who became leaders over the early church. But here Jesus is declared as an apostle. And not only that, a high priest. The word apostle simply means sent one. Sent one. Whereas the high priest, and we'll look at the the high priestly role much deeper in the coming chapters, the high priestly role was more of a representative role somebody who would represent man before God. The high priest was the one who would go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood of the goat there and would do certain things for the people in order to bring man, in a sense, back into a right relationship with God. They were a representative. Apostle uh, then becomes missionary, in the Latin, missio. And again, it carries simply that that simple understanding of sent one. When we speak of missionaries today, that comes from the Latin word and simply means sent one, similar to apostle. And then now, having said, think carefully about Jesus who is first of all a sent one and a representative between man and God, it is now the right time for him to carefully, diplomatically, sensitively start to speak about one of the heroes of Israel and that was Moses. Verse 2 says, For he was faithful to God, Jesus, who appointed him just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. We have to be careful to remember that this largely Jewish readership, Hebrews is why it's called Hebrews, this Jewish readership not only of of people who were still Jewish but also Jewish Christians, revered... Moses. He is acknowledged as a great servant of God by Christians, Jews and Muslims. If we think about Moses, it's not hard to start to understand why it was that the Jewish people revered him. Let me just go through a few things from Moses' life. Born at a time in Egypt where the pharaohs had long since forgotten Joseph and his family. The pharaoh calls for the boy children of the Israelites to be killed. And so the mother of this young babe, Moses, mother and father, make a a basket and, and that is floated on the Nile. And there the daughter of Pharaoh finds the basket and the child. And by an amazing uh, cause of events, it's actually the natural mother who is able to then come and tend to the child in Pharaoh's home. Moses grows up in the house of Pharaoh. He understands the ways of Egypt. He escapes after killing an Egyptian into Midian. There he marries And some years go by until one day he's tending his sheep well out into the wilderness and he sees a bush that is burning but not being consumed. And he goes over to look at this strange circumstance and he's told to stop where he is by God. Take your shoes off, your sandals off, you're standing on holy ground. And there God speaks to Moses and sends him back to Egypt. You see, the writer here is starting to help his readers understand that Christ, as an apostle and high priest, 
was greater than Moses, who also functioned in both of those areas. Go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Whom will I say has sent me? Tell him I am has sent you. And so the story of Moses unfolds, the ten plagues of Egypt, finishing with the, the, uh, the death of the force, firstborn and, and the angel of death going across the land, the release of the people and, and the moving across the Red Sea as the waters are parted and the Egyptian army being drowned as they pursue the Israelites across. And it's not long before complaints start to happen and Moses seems to wear it all. Quail are, are given in the desert for people to eat and water. And then they arrive at Sinai, Mount Sinai, and Moses goes up the mountain and there he receives the law and all kinds of ructions around that. There's an attempt to go into the new land But 10 of the 12 spies give a a bad report and so 40 years more of wandering in the desert. Many times Moses pleads for the life of his people, the Israelites. And in that sense, he is high priest, a representative between his people and God asking that they would be saved. Moses led the people all of those years but was unable to go into the new land that God had promised. He is, we are told at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, buried by God himself. Moses did eventually get into the new land at the transfiguration of Jesus, where he, Elijah, and Jesus converse. Again, we remember that this book, the book of Hebrews, is to a Jewish and Jewish Christian readership. They understand that Moses was an amazing figure and they revered him putting him up above angels and many others. But here the writer is saying carefully, Christ is greater. Christ is greater. It demands again that we ask ourselves the question, what in my life, what in your life has been placed above Christ? And so he goes on to say in verses 3 to 6, but Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses. Just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. And I'll explain that in a few moments. As a builder, I've built many houses and renovated many houses. As you come to the end of a building, people don't come along and kind of go, oh, yeah, yeah praise the building. No, they, they will often praise the builder. You will hear of good builders, builders that you can trust, builders that, that do uh, fine workmanship. And so it is here. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. It is God who put together the people of Israel. Moses was the one who simply tended and cared for them, the writer is saying. Verse 5, Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant in the sense that he took care of the people of Israel. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later 
What were some of those truths? The release of the Israelites from out of Egypt is similar to the release that we can have from out of sin and bondage to death. But Christ, verse 6, as the Son is in charge of God's entire house and we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. So I'd like to illustrate this a little bit on the board and encourage you to take a moment, uh, if you want, to just stop the recording there so that you can grab a piece of uh, paper and pen. Uh, and, and as I jot down some things on the board, it may just help you to, to knit together what uh, the writer is saying here uh, about Moses and Jesus. So the first thing that we have is, is those three uh, titles of apostle, high priest and house, which is mentioned here in these verses. Let me just write those three down. Apostle, high priest and house. These are, in a sense, the role that we're looking at here. And we have Moses and we have Jesus being compared together by the writer of uh, the book of Hebrews. Remembering apostle really is sent one. That's its definition as we think of high priest, we're thinking of somebody who is a representative. And as we think of house, we're really thinking of the responsibility of Moses and Jesus. So let me just put response. Oh, I'll do the whole thing. There we go. Uh, something like that. Responsibility. As we think of Moses in his apostleship, his being sent really was from the burning bush where God says to him, go back to Pharaoh and tell him, I want my people to be released. But when we think of Jesus, his apostleship, his being sent, is from heaven itself. He who the writer of Hebrews has already indicated was there at the beginning and who not only has has gone through all that he has in his suffering, but sits now at the right hand of the Father in heaven. His apostleship stems from God himself from heaven. He comes to earth and returns again to the Father's side. As we think of Moses and his high priestly role, it was really Aaron, his older brother, who had the station of high priest. And if you read the story around Mount Sinai and, and Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, you'll read there about the sad reality of Aaron and being mixed up in the midst of uh, a golden calf being made and worshipped and so on. So Aaron's high priestly role and Moses, as he stands as a representative between man and God, is really partial. It is fallible. And it is temporary. I don't know if all that spelling is correct, but uh, if it's not, I'm sure you'll do it right on your piece of paper. Moses in his high priestly role and Aaron who stood as the high priest, it was a partial role, it was fallible, it was temporary. And temporary in the sense that 
every high priest, every earthly high priest passed away at some point. However, Christ's high priestly role was complete. Done, complete, finished. In fact, on the cross, Jesus' last words or close to his last words were simply those words, it is finished. The war was over. The battle was was won. It was unchangeable. And finally, it was uh, once for all, once for all time. And having sacrificed, he then, as we're told back at the start of the book of Hebrews in chapter 1 and uh, verse 3, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. He sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honour at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. Finally, as we think of the house, and we're running out of room here, what was the house that Moses oversaw? He oversaw the house of Israel. And I've tried to be very careful as I've spoken this sermon out that at the time of Moses they were known as Israel or the Israelites. But at the time of Jesus they are known as the Jewish people because the tribe of Judah, which was the southern kingdom, the main tribe in the southern kingdom, had more or less given them the name of Jews by then. Back in the time of Moses, Israelites, but by Jesus' time, they're known not only as Israel, but also as the Jews. The house that Moses oversaw was Israel, but the house that Jesus oversees, it says here, but the son is in charge of God's entire house. This is Jew and Gentile, the world, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. Jesus, in his high priestly role, was complete, it was unchangeable, it was once for all, and it was enough for everyone. And so the writer of Hebrews tries to give his readers and us today the very clear message that Christ is greater, even greater than one so revered as Moses. Thank you again for joining us. I hope that that's been helpful to you. Perhaps you're somebody who is on a journey towards faith. I'd like to put to you a possibility that you might like to come along to what we call the Alpha Series. It will begin on the 28th of July and we'll have opportunity for you to join us either at 9.30 in the morning or at 7 o'clock at night or we will have an online option as well. The number that's up on the screen you can call or text and just let us know that you'd, you'd like to be Uh, included in that or that you'd be interested in that and someone will contact you. Perhaps you'd like to know more about the Bible and discuss that with other people. We have a lot of small groups that meet, um, eight to twelve people that meet together and, and look at the Bible and talk about it. If that's something that you'd like then please don't hesitate to make contact. Again thank you for joining us. The Lord bless you.